So the charge on a proton, again, we can, I can give you the exact charge when we talk about electricity. We have charge units called coulombs. So I can write that charge for you down, and we'll, we'll do that here in a second. But for the purposes of just comparing them, let's just say that a proton has a charge of positive 1, which is typically what you think about. That's what I've been telling you here. It has a charge of plus 1, um, so to speak. A neutron, because it has no charge, has a charge of 0. Okay? And an electron has a charge of, you guessed it, negative 1. And notice that the proton and the electron totally cancel out because they're equal and opposite. But the neutron has no charge at all, which is what I've been telling you from this diagram. Now one more thing I'll just say. I've drawn it here, but just for completeness, the protons live in the nucleus. The neutrons live in the nucleus. The electron lives in the orbit. So everything I'm telling you here is just what I've drawn on the board. I just like to draw, I like to write things down so that everybody has it in front and can see exactly what I'm talking about so we're all on the same page. So it's very important that we understand this before we move on because we're really building the bedrock for later on when we talk about some, some other topics related to atomic mass and things like that. So we have these components of the atom. They're called protons. They have positive charge of, of positive one. That's what we call them, protons, positive. We have these electrons. They have charge of negative one, but they're exactly the same value of the charge, and that by itself is an amazing thing about nature. It's exactly the same charge, but they're just negatives of one another. So when you construct an atom with the same number of electrons as protons, the atom as a whole has no electrical charge because they cancel each other out. Now the neutrons, which are also there, have no electrical charge, so they don't contribute anything to the charge discussion. But as far as mass goes, everything has mass, right? All of these particles have mass. The proton, we say, has a relative mass of one. We just, since we know it's gonna be a small value of kilograms, we put that on the back burner and we just say, okay, just, let's just say it has a mass of one. The neutrons also have a mass of so very close to one that we're just gonna say it's one uh, for the purpose of chemistry. When you talk about nuclear physics and building nuclear reactors, then yeah, the, the, the mass of a neutron is slightly different, so you have to worry about it. But for chemistry, just call it one. Electrons on this scale here are thousand times or more less massive than what we have here. So when we look at atoms, the most important things to pull away from this discussion are that the charges of the protons and the electrons are the equal and opposite. But the mass of the proton and the neutron is really all that matters in the atom. The mass of the electron is so small that even though it's very important from a charge point of view, the mass of the electron doesn't really contribute to the mass of the atom at all. All of the mass, in other words, is concentrated in the center of the nucleus. And that's kind of similar to our solar system, right? The mass of the sun is enormous compared to all of the other planets put together. So the mass in the center of the solar system is, is concentrated kind of in the center. Yeah, we have some big planets. We have Jupiter, we have Saturn. But the mass of the sun is much, much, it just dwarfs everything else put together in the solar system. So if you think about this solar system model here, which I told you is not quite right when you really start digging into it, but it's pretty good to visualize it. The mass of the atom is concentrated in the center. This stuff going around doesn't have much mass, but it does have equal and opposite charge, and that's what allows the atom to be stable. All right?